أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين Today inshallah we're going to start the first step in this stairs to reach closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this series of Madarij al-Salikin written by al-Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah. So after all these introductions which I mentioned in the previous lectures which was very important to understand in order to prepare us for the next step. As just a summary, you know, Islam encourage us to learn and to know and to ask. As Allah mentioned, in just the one recited by the Imam, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So we are encouraged to ask. We shouldn't do something that we don't know. So for example, you want to go for Hajj, so you need to learn how to perform Hajj. You want to know how to do the Umrah. You need to know how to perform your prayers properly and perfectly. This is how the Prophet ﷺ teach us. So today is the first step. The first step to Allah, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which Al-Imam Ibn Qayyim, he named it. It is the level of the wake up. The wake up. And he said, this is very important stage or situation that anyone needs to walk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or come closer to Allah. The first thing is to wake up. And we know human beings are two groups. One, the first group, they are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek his pleasure and they seek his jannah. So they know where they are going, they learn how to go, and they understand the way to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While the second group, they don't know where they are going, they lost their ways, and they are not even in a position to stop and think, or to reflect, or to search, where to go. So those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارٌ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ May Allah forbid. So those people, they have eyes but they cannot see. They have minds but they are not using it. They have ears but they are not listening. Those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they are like 
الأنعام الأنعام the animals so what is the difference between the animals and the human being it's basically one very important thing that Allah has given to human being that is called الأمانة the trust which Allah gave to us that is the belief which Allah ask us to hold and carry in our hearts that is the relation between us and the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the difference so those who lost their ways it doesn't matter if they are rich if they are in power if they are having all kind of resources in life but their heart doesn't have the faith and that relation with Allah is lost so they will find their ways sometime some way in bad situation in depression in sadness because their soul doesn't have the enough food so he feed his body but he's not feeding his soul and what is the f- the food for our soul it is the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's why it's very important to wake up so we have to realize that we need the wake up al-imam ibn al-qayyim said that the human being before he gets this wake up call he is in deep sleep his eyes are open but his heart is in deep sleep Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu he said I heard a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this hadith is very serious it talks about a very important thing that we need to reflect upon he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said about al-amana Al-amana, trust. And the scholars of the tafsir, they say that trust here, al-amana, is al-iman, faith. The belief, the taqwa. So the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this faith into the roots of the hearts of people. The roots of the hearts of people. So then they learn the Quran and they learn the Hadith, the Sunnah. And this has happened, right? So when Allah sent the Prophet ﷺ with the message, with the Quran, so who accept the message, he learned the Quran, recite, reflect, behave, and learn the sunnah and follow the Prophet ﷺ steps. Now look to the hadith what the Prophet ﷺ said. Then Hudayfa said, the Prophet ﷺ told us how Allah is taking away this belief from the hearts. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said that that person will go to sleep now the sleep here it does not mean that he go to bed and sleep no it is the sleep of the heart what he's talking about heart so if his heart get into sleep get into away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look to what happens to the faith then the Prophet ﷺ said that the faith 
will be taken away from the heart until there will be some spots in his hearts with little faith so that that faith the belief is not taken away totally 100% no there will be something remains in the heart then he sleep another time which means he become away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again if he did not wake up if he did not realize then what what's gonna happen then the Prophet said then the faith will be taken totally from the heart and it will leave some traces in the heart so what kind of traces is that ya Rasulullah so he said it is like look to the example which is really amazing how the Prophet described he said like when you bring a charcoal a very hot charcoal and you roll it down on your leg to fill on the ground so where it touches your skin it burn it and it makes a bubbles so he said that this is what is left in the heart after taking away the belief the iman the faith these bubbles looks like full but it is actually empty nothing in it so that's why his prayer so he's still praying but his prayer is empty his good deeds looks like good deeds but it is empty his fasting he's fasting he reciting Quran he read the hadith but all of this it's all empty that is the major and the serious thing about it the problem that that fellow he doesn't realize that this faith is taken away he's still praying he's still fasting he's still reading Quran but it's all empty that's what we need to know Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu the scholar of the companions he said by Allah I am counting my sleep when I go to bed with my intention the same way I count my good deeds when I am awake you see what that means it means the companions they learn from the Prophet وسلم, not to leave even their sleep to go useless their sleep is counting good deeds for them how the intention this is we have to be smart in our good deeds and our habits to change it to change it from just a routine habit into a good deeds a counter for us when you go to bed your intention is not just to sleep but your intention is to give the power to wake up for the fajr and come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to pray to make zikr and so on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said oh the servant of Allah repent to Allah and make istighfar by Allah I am doing istighfar and repentance to Allah every day hundred times and he is the prophet of Allah sallallahu wasallam he is the most beloved one to Allah he is Habibullah he is the best messenger of Allah he is the one who will open the gates of Jannah on the day of judgment he is the one who will perform the shafa'ah 
for all creatures. But still, he's doing istighfar every day hundred times. Why the Prophet is doing istighfar? Stay with me. You will know now. Now, the question, how can we wake up? How we will wake up to realize that we are awake? Actually, Ibn al-Jawzi said, another Imam, Ibn al-Jawzi said, he said, I think too much about how the people, they wake up and they become guided to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I realize that the most of people who wake up, it was given to them a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has chosen them to wake up. So that's why my brothers, you have to be happy that Allah has chosen you to come to Fajr Jama'ah, has chosen you to come and listen, to understand and realize those things which we all need. The Prophet Sallallahu he teach us every day in Al-Witr to make a dua, Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in our prayers, 17 rak'ah farz, 12 rak'ah sunnah, every day we read, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim, Imam ibn al-Taymi, a shaykh al-Islam, he said, this is the best dua you ever do for yourself. Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. We say this one every day 40 times. But when you read اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Please do it from your heart Not from your tongue So that Allah will accept Allah will open the guidance for you This is the best gift from Allah Is to be guided You know the companions They never believe that Umar ibn Khattab will become a Muslim. They never believe the Prophet sallallahu Ah, what happened? Ah, yes, sallallahu alayhi wa So the Prophet sallallahu when he used to call to Allah, the one who, is, who was annoying the Prophet sallallahu the most was Umar ibn Khattab. Until one time, every time the Prophet goes to make da'wah, Umar was behind him to, to give these people away, keep them away from the Prophet. Until one time, the Prophet Sallallahu he fed up from Umar. He said, until when Umar, you just following me? Nobody can believe that Umar, radiallahu anhu, will become a Muslim. One time in the first hijrah to Al-Habasha, the first hijrah, Umar saw a woman. She was packing her luggage, packing her stuff and trying to move. So he asked her, where are you going? She said, we are leaving this town. You have fighted us in our faith. You make our life difficult by preventing us to practice our ibadah, let us go and find a freedom to worship Allah where we want. Then Umar said, may Allah be with you. So when that lady goes back and met her husband to continue the packing, she said, do you know that Umar, he saw me packing my stuff. And he felt sad because we are leaving. He said, Umar felt sad? She said, yes. And he told me, may Allah be with you. 
Then her husband laughed. <laughs> you think that Umar is gonna be Muslim one day? By Allah, if the donkey of Al Khattab family will become a Muslim, then Umar will become a Muslim. But, but it happened. It happened. This is a gift from Allah. Many people, they are away from Allah, totally away, but suddenly something happened. Allah guide them to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bring them to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Al-Kahf, we read Surah Al-Kahf every Jum'ah, right? Those group of youngs, these youth, how they, how they have been guided to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ So it happens, an idea. They were sitting, everyone at his home. There is no relationship between them. So they think about heaven and earth and they said, there should be a creator for this heaven and earth. It cannot happen incidentally, accidentally, or by anything. There should be a creator. So when they start thinking, oh, there, is, there should be a God. So they left homes and they went to the desert. They meet each other in the desert. And they start asking, why you come here? They said, Rabbuna Rabbu Samawati wal Ard. Allah has guided us that there is a creator for this heaven and earth. That was their case because they realized that what their people in their town doing is totally wrong. They should find another way. That's why they went out trying to find the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said When everyone go to sleep The shaitan comes to him Every one of us Your enemy is coming to you Every day you go to sleep Then what the shaitan will do? The Prophet Sallallahu said That the shaitan will make a three ties over your head. This kind of magic of the shaitan. Three ties. And he will say, sleep, you have a long night. And then he tie the first one. Sleep, you have a long night. Why he's doing this? Because he don't want you to wake up for the fajr or for the qiyam. So, when your alarm rings, huh? you was tired all the day and you sleep late, then the alarm bang. So you open your eyes, you close the alarm. Okay, I will wake up now, just one minute, and that's it, you are gone. Some people, oh, the alarm is binging. Okay, so he wake up, he sit, and then, what am I doing? Oh, I'm so tired. Okay, just five minutes more. <laughs> then he go back, sleep, and it's gone. You see, tricks. The shaitan is playing tricks with us. And this is what he's doing with us to stay away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is his musibah. When he see you coming to masjid, when he see you praying your prayers, when he seeing you doing the night qiyam, that is the musiba for the shaitan. The guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wake you up. You know the magicians of Musa, of Pharaoh, when they come to challenge Musa alayhi salam, they ask Pharaoh, Aina lana la ajran in kunna nahnu ghalibin? Are you going to pay us if we win this challenge? 
So Pharaoh is smart. He wants to win this battle with Musa. He said, قَالَ نَعَمْ You will get a very good pay. And not only that, قَالَ نَعَمْ وَإِنَّكُمْ إِذًا لَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ You will be too close to me. That's a good deal. So what happened? فَأَلْقَوْ حِبَالَهُمْ وَعِصِيَّهُمْ So they throw their ropes and their sticks. وَقَالُوا Look what they say. وَقَالُوا بِعِزَّةِ فِرْعَونَ By the dignity of Pharaoh, we will win today. فَأَلْقَى مُوسَى عَصَاهُ فَإِذَا هِيَ تَلْقَفُ مَا يَأْفِكُونَ then Musa, when he throws the, the stick and it turns into a big snake, eat everything. So what happened with these magicians? They perform sujood to Allah. You see, the guidance comes. This is the wake up. This is the wake up. When you wake up, you have to do something. You cannot just close the alarm and go back to sleep. We have to do something, right? To stay wake up. So when you wake up, you, can, you want to come to Masjid. So the Prophet ﷺ said, so the first thing you say when you wake up, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana, النشور. And another hadith, he said, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi radda ilayya ruhi wa afani fi jasadi wa adhina li bidhikri. So when you say this, the first tie that shaitan make on your head will be released. Then you go make wazu, the second tie goes, and when you make salah, you pray, the third one goes off. Now, this is very important thing and I will end with this one. Qala ibn al So some people after they wake up, their desires take him back to what he was doing before. Like the guy who was sleeping, he just closed the alarm and he go back. So his desires take over him, his actions, and make him to sleep again. And some people, they wake up, but he still struggle to continue to the way of Allah or to go back. So he is in between, sometimes moving forward to Allah, but his desires catch him back and stuck. So this is either one day he will be defeated by his desires or he will keep doing this jihad between his nafs and desires and his action towards Allah and he will reach to Allah with wounds in his heart. So his heart is not Salim, but he will reach. And the third one, who defeated the desires, defeated the shaitan, and keeps going, and keeps going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the summary, which I want you to understand why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to make istighfar and tawbah, Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim said, those who was chosen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since the day when they wake up, they never go back to sleep. Since they wake up, since they realize that they are away from Allah, they wake up and they start working more and more. And when they reach to any level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
they look back to the level where they were before and they found that they didn't do enough so they make istighfar. I hope you understand. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to make istighfar ﷺ. When he looked back to where he was, he found, oh, I didn't do enough. So he make istighfar. That's why after every worship we do, we have to make istighfar. After your five prayers, after prayer, you say astaghfirullah al-azim. After fasting, istighfar. After hajj, istighfar. And so on. That's the guidance from the Prophet ﷺ to us. That we need to do istighfar. So the first step, as I mentioned to you, is the wake up. And the wake up comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To those whom Allah knows that there is something good in their hearts. وَلَوْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا لَأَسْمَعَهُمْ So when you hear this, you know that Allah has chosen you. Allah has given you this guidance because He knows that there is something good in your heart. وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ اللهم اجمعنا على ما يرضيك واجعلنا من المتحبين فيك اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مباركا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده معصوما ولا تجعل منا ولا فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك ومنجيات أمرك والسلامة من كل إثم والغنيمة من كل بر ورضاك والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم إنا نسألك حسن الختام والوفاة على الإسلام والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وألسنتنا من الكذب وأعيننا من الخيانة اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي وعصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اجعل عملنا كله لك خالصا ولا نشرك فيه معك شيئا أبدا يا أرحم الراحمين تقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا وتلاوتنا وذكرنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعلنا في عبادك الصالحين اللهم إنا نسألك قبل الموت توبة وعند الموت شهادة وبعد الموت راحة وسعادة اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلها دقها وجلها ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارفع عنا الوباء والغلاء إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم استر عوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا اللهم استرنا يا أرحم الراحمين ولا تفضحنا اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى ربنا آمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين